Yes. Hey guys, Madison here, back for another Film Friday, and today I'm going to be watching Hoosiers from, I believe it's 1986. I don't know much about this movie except that it stars Gene Hackman, who I really, really enjoy as an actor, and I know it's a basketball movie, and I would assume, based on the title, that it is about Indiana's basketball team, which thankfully I actually enjoy rooting for in real life. I've been watching a lot of March Madness as I do every year. It's been a family tradition my entire life, ever since I could fill out a bracket. I did one every year, and I get really, really mad most years, like this one. <laughs> This year was especially rough. My bracket got almost completely destroyed in the first two days. It was rough. It was rough. Uh, I'm definitely not winning the family tournament this year. So we're not going to talk about that, but <laughs> March Madness got me thinking about basketball and I realized that I've never watched a basketball movie on my channel ever. And I was like, how has this happened? Because basketball is a huge part of my life, always has been. I grew up always going to my brother's basketball games. I played basketball when I was really little. And then middle school, all the way through high school, I played on my school's basketball team. So basketball has always been something that I love and enjoy playing and enjoy watching as well. So I was like, how have I never watched a basketball movie on my channel? I don't know. But today that is finally going to change because today I am watching Hoosiers, which won the poll by a landslide this week. So I'm really excited to dive in and check it out. And disclaimer, I don't know if you guys can tell, but Spring allergies are wreaking havoc on me right now, so if it looks like my eyes are watering the entire movie, they probably are. It may or may not be tears. I don't know if this is a tearjerker or not, but I feel like my eyes are already watering, so my apologies for that. I've done the best I can to mitigate that, but sometimes there's just nothing you can do. So we're going to be having watery eyes this reaction. I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys can't tell on camera. I don't know if you can or not, but yeah, guys, I'm really excited to dive in and check out this movie. So without further ado, let's watch Hoosiers. I unashamedly love the synth soundtracks in 80s movies. So great. There's just a certain nostalgia that comes with it. Jerry Goldsmith. I know he did the soundtrack of another movie I reacted to, but I can't remember what it was. I remember seeing that name. This definitely looks like it could be small town Indiana. I wonder if that's where we're starting this movie off here. Oh yeah, it totally is. And it's fall, which means it's basketball time. <laughs> Confirmed 1950s. Uh, excuse me, miss. Could you recommend me to clean the summer's office? Down the stairs. You're not the new coach. Are you expecting somebody different? Younger. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. And I hear you're a new history and civics teacher as well. That's part of the job, as I understand it. Have an experience teaching? Am I being interviewed here? Man, she's shameless with her questioning. You know, if everyone is as nice as you, country hospitality is going to get an awful name. What a pleasant thing to say. <laughs> well, girl, I mean, you were a little rude. Now, that's the actress from The Natural, right? The crazy lady who tried to tried to kill Robert Redford. <laughs> Norman Dale? I don't really recognize you. It's been 20 years. It's been a while for you. Yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing. I don't just want to be repeating ourselves. Your slate's clean here. So he's got some kind of sketchy history. Jimmy, this is Norman Dale, our new coach. Hi. It's not very friendly. You're a friendly town you got here. Can be. Let's go back out the farm. Got a place we can step out there for you. Get you squared away. This is a, a rough introduction for this man. I wonder if they all know his reputation. Say hello to Chester. Hello, Chester. Say goodbye to Chester. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. He, uh, he wouldn't play basketball after the coach died. Well, the coach was kind of like an old man to him, you know? At least he comes on down to school and shoots them buckets. Aside from that, he's just about backed away from everything. It was my experience that nobody's irreplaceable. In over 40 years of looking at the best estates ever had, I have never seen a better ball player than Jimmy Chuka. Never. I'm glad you're here, Norm. I think it's gonna work out. It's gotta work out this time. Or that's it for good. I think it's gonna, but it's gonna be a bumpy road by the looks of things. Gotta win everyone's respect. Last time you coached was 12 years ago? Yes, that's right. What you've been doing since? Well, I've been in the Navy for the last 10 years. I was a chief petty officer. Hmm. Since I've been running practices the last couple of weeks, <laughs> I'll help you out till you get your feet wet. Do you believe in man-to-man -man or zone defense? Zone defense is all we've played in the past, yeah, and right. it's the only thing that'll work this year. <laughs> Man, they're sticklers, aren't they? They don't like any kind of change. We are 15 and 10 last year, and we got all our boys back but one. 15 and 10? Well, you can do much better than that. We don't get Jimmy Chitwood back playing ball. We don't have a prayer. This is right. Jimmy's the jack to their room. It's been real nice talking to you. Good night. In other words, dismissed. <laughs> or in this case, I'm out of here. Man, I would not want to be walking into that hornet's nest. I guess you're gonna want to talk about Jimmy. What, what's it have to do with you? I look after him. And he and I decided that it's best for him oh, not to play well, this. Funny. Well, I'm sure you're gonna be convinced to go after him. Well, if I am, you will be the first to know. Yeah, well, we know that's what's gonna end up happening is he's gonna try to convince Jimmy to play. Give me two, give me two outside. Get it up there, you can't score, get all sure. Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> I did not like this guy. I had a different schedule on mine. These boys got a routine they're used to. Throw a new coach with newfangled ideas at them. It might get them all confused. I'm sure they can handle it. Well, let's be real friendly here, okay? My name is Norm. Secondly, your coaching days are over. <laughs> Look, mister, there's two kinds of dumb. A guy that gets naked and runs out in the snow and barks at the moon, and a guy who does the same thing in my living room. That's some sort of threat. I would not threaten Gene Hackman. Leave the ball, will you, George? Unfazed. He's been in New York, man. Like, small town Indiana, he can handle it. <laughs> Seven players, that is? I don't, I don't count. I'm not no good. Basketball is a voluntary activity. Any of you feel you don't want to be on a team, feel free to leave right now. Did you hear what I said? <clears throat> I'm just curious to know when we start. We start when I say so. Okay, would you kind of let me know? Because I'm kind of getting tired of standing. Don't come back until you learn to keep your mouth shut and listen. You tell him. Come on, Whit, let's fly this chicken coop. Have fun, coach, trying to win with five. Well, learn some respect and come back. Cheers. Line them up right here. Is that Jimmy? He wants to play. What do we scrimmage? We don't scrimmage. No shooting either. That ain't no fun. My practices aren't designed for your enjoyment. I've seen you guys can shoot, but there's more to the game than shooting. There's fundamentals and defense. Five players on the floor function as one single unit. No one more important than the other. Oh my God. Those Converse sneakers. Yeah, if there's only gonna be like five of them, they need to have really good cardio. <laughs> Practice is closed uh, to outsiders. Uh, I don't want any distractions. This one's got something to say to you. Sorry, coach, about walking out. Won't happen again. You're the boss. There's still an hour of practice. Get dressed. You get any trouble from Raider Witch, you let me know. Well, wasn't practiced outsider as well. You just not handle this. No, I got this. This man's got a job to do. He wants you out of here. I best believe you better be on your Come way. On. I like this dad helping out the coach. Velvet Shooter Flatch. This is Norman Dale, our new coach. Coach. Here's some change. Give it up. Sorry, Ever. That ain't your fault. I don't want to hear it, Dad. Jimmy, I didn't see you in class today. Any reason you want to tell me about it? This actor, this guy playing Jimmy, he can actually shoot. He has a special talent, a gift. Not the schools, not the townspeople. It's yours to do with what you choose. Because that's what I believe. I can tell you this. I don't care if you play on the team or not. Get a little reverse psychology going. I don't care if you're on the team, but also be good to have him on the team. <laughs> I think if he doesn't pressure him, he'll be like more inclined because Jimmy obviously wants to be on the team. He's out there practicing. He's like hiding in the shadows at practice. Leave him alone, all right? If he works really hard, he can get an academic scholarship to Wabash College and can get out of this place. Well, he can do that and play basketball at the same time. You know, if Jimmy is as good as everybody says he is, I would have thought that a basketball scholarship would have made a lot of sense. A basketball hero around here is treated like a god. I mean, how can you ever find out what he could really do? You know, most people would kill to be treated like a god just for a few moments. I hate to tell you this, Mr. Dale, but it's only a game. Why so unfriendly, Miss Wiener? 
You don't know anything about me. Just stay away from Jimmy. I don't want him coaching in Hickory when he's 50. Good grief. She is savage. My gosh. <laughs> Something personal has happened with her. I don't know if it was like her dad was a coach. And like two into basketball or something happened because she is bitter. I mean, I get what she's saying. People do take it to extremes, but also she just seems to have it out for him personally. The boys and I are, are getting to know each other, to see who we are and uh, what we can be. This is your team. Man, that's got to be an ouchie if you're one of those other guys playing. These six individuals made a choice to work, put themselves on the line 23 nights in the next four months to represent you, this high school. That kind of commitment and effort deserves and demands your respect. This is your team. I remember to discipline your game. Absolutely no shots until you've passed off four times. How many times are we going to pass off? Four. Lord, bless these boys and the season before them. Amen. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, hold it up, Strap, come on. How long is he going to go on like this? Tell him when he's ready, man. Four. I hope that'll be sometime before tip off. How do you feel? How is my first game? It's his first game with this team, so it's kind of like starting over. <laughs> interesting that she like hates it so much supposedly but there she is at the game she secretly enjoys it <laughs> somebody make a move here. They're acting like they can't dribble. This is not starting well. I feel like the four passes thing is kind of stupid. Like, I agree, don't rush and just shoot it immediately, but like, there we go, we got a basket. I feel like it's too much pressure to put on them and be like, you have to make four passes. Like, if you get a good opportunity on the second, third look, take it. Play some defense. <laughs> Oh, there was Jimmy. Jimmy's like, they need me. I want you to close down those passing lanes. Your defense is awful. What about our offense? That's awful too. <laughs> you guys remember what we worked on in practice, all right? I want to see it on the court. How many times are we going to pass before we shoot? Four. Four. If Gene Hackman was yelling at me in the locker room, I would go out on that court and motivate. <laughs> Do not disappoint this man again. I mean, he's not passing it, but he's hitting shots, man. Isn't that what you want? Uh-oh. Where are you going? In the game. Sit down. We're gonna have five out there. Sit down gonna play four guys. Oh, everybody in the stands is gonna hate him. <laughs> Coach, need one more. My team's on the floor. He's trying to make a point, but it might cost them the game. Those of you on the floor at the end, I'm proud of you. I'm only gonna say this one time. What I say when it comes to this basketball team is the law, absolutely and without discussion. He's drawn a line in the sand. Let me help you there. Oh, appreciate it. Oh, both Sorry. I've been hearing plenty on you. I believe it's time we had a talk. Sunday. Supper. I accept. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> this movie could not be any more fall, and I love it. Just the fall aesthetic everywhere, like the pumpkins, the fog, the leaves. It has such a vibe, and I'm here for it. Passing Every game my brother ever played was the most important thing ever happened to his family. His mother would be able to sleep the night before. 
I just could never figure out why it meant so much. Not to that extreme. I don't get it. So it's her brother. So she was kind of jealous of her brother, like, whenever he was playing. That was the most important thing to her family. You knew that team? I know everything there is to know about the greatest game ever invented. You're playing Cedar Knob tomorrow. Ain't nobody knows them better than me. You cannot play them all the way man on man. Make them chuck it from the cheap seats. That'll do. I'm not sure about this man. He seems helpful, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> guys are like animals. Gosh. How can anybody play in this cracker box? You're yeah, very nasty. You can't go to the left. I know that. Is he just like drunk half the time? That's a flagrant foul! He didn't do nothing wrong. Oh, come on, that kill Billy Johnson. Uh, Don't get teed up, coach. Your players are playing like a bunch of gorillas. Who are you calling gorilla? Bust off. Yikes. Calm down. You all right? Yeah, I'm doing the best I can. You know, if Norm's gonna hammer on discipline and stuff so much, he needs to show some himself. He doesn't need to get in a fight with the ref. I know refs are frustrating. I know they make bad calls, but you gotta just rein it in. Because if you get teed up, all that drama happens, you just, you lose the momentum. You get kicked out, things go bad. <laughs> I guess the doctor says you uh, gotta take it easy. No more basketball games for a while, huh? Looks like you're on your own. You kind of like being on your own. Kind of like see you up on your feet. You can count on yourself. Aww. Anybody home? <laughs> Doggy's home. This is my domicile here. It gets pretty rough here in the winter, but I manage. <laughs> I've got a proposition for you. Uh, Cleo's gonna be laid up for a while. I want you to be my assistant. I want you to come to the practices and uh, sit on the bench with me during the games. You want me? <laughs> what do you say? That's a heck of an opportunity. Not under the following conditions. Clean yourself up. Show up at the games on time and the practices, and that you're sober. Oh, no. It's giving you a chance, man. What has my drinking got to do with my knowledge about basketball? You can't drink in front of these boys. You're embarrassing your son. I'd like you to leave. He's trying to help you, man. He's probably been where you are. I don't know what happened with Norm in the past, but he had something happen. Guys are playing real well, real well. And real patient on your offense. Oh my gosh, I didn't even recognize him. Wow. I was like, who's coming down here? And then I realized. Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's go. D! I ain't feeling real good. You'll be fine. The kids are starting to get it. I mean, it's really fun. I'm glad he showed up. Come on, man. Coach, what you're doing with my dad, I'm not seeing it. When's the last time somebody gave him a chance? You don't deserve a chance. A petition's been issued, one year removal as basketball coach. For real. He's making real strides with these guys, and the town just can't see it. They won't give him a chance. Technical foul. What are you talking about? The ball is better trying to come a time out. You're gone. What do you mean? Out of the game, I'm putting you on fire with the state commission. He's got to quit getting thrown out of games. I need your help. The shooter's going to take you home. You pay attention. Come on, shooter. You can do it. Well, I'm assuming it didn't go very well. They didn't show us what happened. Norman Dale, coach the national champions, Ithaca Warriors, was given a lifetime suspension for physically assaulting his own player in Ithaca's last season's game. This was the latest in a series of controversial incidents involving the successful, though highly volatile, coach. Oh. Uh, where'd you find that article? The library, dear Luke. Hmm. I was curious. They didn't just have the internet back then. I don't think you better be there tonight. It won't be pleasant. Someone's got to stand up for him or he's going to be gone. I was hired to teach the boys a game of basketball, and I did that to the best of my ability. Oh, no, he's there. I apologize for nothing. You may not be pleased with the results, but I am. I'm very proud of these boys. I think it'd be a big mistake to let Coach Dale go. Give him a chance. You heard the woman. Go her. Good for her. A yes vote means he stays. A no vote he goes. Let's do this as quickly as you can. 
Jimmy. What can I do for Jimmy? I got something to say. I don't know if it'll make any change, but I figure it's time for me to start playing ball. Yeah. One other thing. I play, coach stays, he goes, I go. And now they gotta keep him. I hate that Jimmy's feeling pressured to do that so the coach can stay, but. Coach is uh, dismissed by a vote of 68 to 45. I think we should vote again. It's called for a revote. All those in favor of the coach staying, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Coach stays. Way to go, Jimmy. Way to sway the vote. <laughs> Making strides. They're winning some games. I stuck my neck out for you. Or you live up here in a bargain or get yourself in a hospital and dry out. My well, there's a shot. Hey, we got 10 games to play. Now you come along for the ride. You got to give me your word that you will not be kicked out of no games. That's a fair deal. They both need to hold each other to it. Hold their feet to the fire. Don't do it, coach. You're pathetic, you know that? You're a disgrace to your profession. Kick me out of the game. You're putting me on. Kick me out of the game and I'm going to start screaming like a mad fool. You're out of here. What? Why would he do that on purpose? Is he trying to force Shooter to, like, step up to the plate? It's up to you now. He shouldn't put him on the spot like that. Oh my gosh. You reckon number four will put up their last shot, Dad? Yeah, probably. They've been picking low all night. Great. Let yourself get taken out. Buddy, you drop down and take his place. Close that lane. Okay, TV. Come on. I'm rooting for him so hard. <laughs> Uh, this is the last shot that we got. We're gonna run the picket fence at it. Merle, you're the swing man. Jimmy, you're solo right. Don't get caught watching the paint dry. All right, take it. Oh, I love it. He's getting his moment. He's standing up. Good job, Shooter. I believed in you. <laughs> you did good. You did real good. His son's proud of him. He got to know what that would feel like. That should give him some extra motivation. Where's your father? He said he wanted to be alone, sir. Too much pressure. You keep in the game. All right? Yes, sir. He better not be drunk. I've got 12 red, one, two red. Oh, 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 oh. That was no ball! Charge you on the way! Norm, hey, sir, uh, we were playing. We know that, we know that. That's a technical foul. Darn it. You keep it a game, Everett. You understand? Play hard. <sighs> Come on, guys. Darn it. Don't get in a fight. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Come on, forfeit that team. My boy can't even play. He's all racked up. That's a good one. Try to win. Let's play ball. No, we're gonna keep going, okay? <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. There you go, there you go. Yes, whoop whoop. won the finals. Shooter! Shooter! Oh no. Dad. 
My gosh. Did he just pass out or did he actually shoot himself? <sighs> a couple months in here, you'll be dry as a Sahara Desert. How's my, my son doing? Do Doc said he's gonna be okay for the regionals in about a week. I'm so proud of you, Coach. Sectional champs. You're a big part of it. I didn't make a lick of difference, you know that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Come on, Chief. Now I'm gonna cry. I want Shooter to be okay. Come on, fellas. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go, guys. Let's go. Regional finals now. We're going to the big time. Forget about the crowds, the size of the school, and remember what got you here. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're gonna be winners. All right! Let's go! Hype. Lock it up! Lock it up! Okay. Come on! Well, Maybe just a little bit too tough. I love seeing angry Gene Hackman yelling at refs. <laughs> It's so great. Coming back. Jimmy coming in clutch. Don't do dumb fouls. I don't know. I don't know if his feet were planted. It looked like he was still moving to me. Hey, that was a dirty move. Everett, you're on the bench. Oh, okay. Come on, you're on the bench. Strap, you're gonna play forever. Strap. God wants you on the floor. There you go. It's gotten into you. Lord, I can feel the strength. Well, keep your strength in the dribble, all right? I love that kid. <laughs> Did he foul out? Holly. We need you now. Oh, I want this kid to do good so bad. He doesn't believe in himself. Chin up, kid. No, oh, no. I want him to hit the game winning shot. <laughs> he got fouled. Free throws for the win. Oh no, he does the, he shoots underhanded. Oh, he does the granny shot. <laughs> Fouled again. Oh, free throws for the win, come on. Oh, they're gonna try to ice him. Yes, one more, one more. Yes! Oh, I'm so happy for him. Yay! Oh, that was great. Norman Dale, coach of the Ithaca Warriors, was suspended. I, I can't really explain that. One second, everything I'd worked for, it's just all finished. Funny thing, too, he's the best kid that ever played for me. Tough and stubborn and willful. Sounds like someone I know. Oh, we got a little something, something happening here. South Bend Central is one of the power teams in the state. How can your little guys compete? My boys only know basketball, farming, and school. Played in front of 15,000 people is kind of like uh, you and me going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what team we play is the least of my concern. Will you be back at Hickory next year? It's a good question. How you doing, Dad? I feel real empty inside the other night. No, that don't matter, Dad. You're going to get better. Couple of months when you get out of here, we're gonna get a house. I love you, Dad. Oh. <laughs> Son, keep their bud. I hope they do. <laughs> no school as small has ever been in the state championship. That nurse is just not even listening anymore. <laughs> They've never played in front of a crowd like this. Hold us into the backboard. 
What is it? 15 feet. He's showing them the courts just the same. I think you'll find us exact same measurements as our gym back in Hickory. Yep, don't let it go to your head, boys. Just play your game. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the championship game of the Indiana State High School Basketball Tournament. They had to get a lot of extras for this scene. <laughs> Already calling this the game of the century. News people from all over the Middle West are here. Shooter could have been there. Their top player is Boyle, number 15. He averages about 20 points a game. Oof. Uh, we're way past big speech time. Uh, I want to thank you for the last few months. It's been very special. Anybody have anything they want to say? Let's win this and for all the small schools who never had a chance to get here. I want to win for my dad. Let's win for Coach, who got us here. I love it. And David put his hand in the bag and took out a stone and slung it. And it struck the Philistine on the head, and he fell to the ground. Yeah, we've got a David and Goliath situation right here. Tiny school versus giant school. I love you guys. There goes their number one player. He scored already. What's the score? What's the score? It doesn't look good. Come out! Come on, guys, fight for it. I just wish they'd show me what the dang score is. <laughs> oh, there it is. They're down by 10. Okay. It's not as bad as I was thinking it might be. <laughs> Nothing but net. Come on. Come on. They're only down by four. Come on, guys. Yep, it's at this point that you're too nervous to watch. <laughs> But you have to. I love how that guy's cheering so hard now, and he was like the number one hater. <laughs> Norm's number one hater. Play passes to Jimmy Chipwood. Yes, that was nice. Oh, we're gonna have another dramatic finish, guys. All right, lift it up, lift it up. Jimmy, they're gonna be expecting you to take the last shot. Buddy, you get the ball, give it to Merle on the picket fence. He's gonna take the last shot. What's the matter with you guys? I'll make it. All right. Oh man, come on, Jimmy. Go, go, go. There's only five seconds. <laughs> yes! Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! Yes! My, how things changed between them. Man. Oh, that's a, such a pretty shot right there. Let's be real clear about what we're after here, all right? It's team, team, team. Five players on the floor functioning as one single unit. No one more important than the other. I love you guys. Man, y'all, that was so good. That was a classic. I enjoyed that so much. And I was trying to restrain myself because I didn't want to like blow out my mic, but I was like watching basketball, you know? <laughs> I was like wanting to cheer and scream at the top of my lungs. I got so into it, especially like those last three games where they were like in the sectional finals, regional finals, and then they were in the championship. I got so hyped for them. Like I didn't know what level the team was going to make it to. And 
That was amazing. Winning a state championship. We love to see it. I was rooting for them so hard. But as always, my favorite thing in movies like this is seeing the personal stories like of the characters and their their personal journeys that they go on throughout the movie. And I loved seeing Coach Norman Dale get his redemption arc after being kind of shamed and disgraced and banned from like coaching any uh, college basketball, going back down to coaching at the level of high school, but achieving such great things with his team and taking them to the top of their their division. I loved seeing that. I really got invested in the players. I enjoyed them a lot. I actually could have stood to see like more of them like more of the teammates interacting with each other what their friendships were like and how they related to each other like because mostly we just saw them on the court together we didn't really get to see them off the court and what their lives were like there we were more focused on Norman's story and his side of things and Shooter his story we didn't really get much of the players interacting and like their lives off the court. But I I know they had to like crunch this into like an hour and 45 minute movie basically, but I could have stood to see more of that because I love digging into the, the characters and seeing what their personal journeys and goals are. But even with just the little bit that we got with certain characters like Ollie, I think was the little, the blonde guy who ended up hitting those game winning free throws. I got so invested in him just seeing that that little bit that lets us know like he's an underdog, like he's not the good player on the team. He's kind of considered the weakest link and then he really came through when they needed him. And I really liked Jimmy. Uh, He, I don't want to say, I almost said he was my favorite, but I don't know. I liked Jimmy. I liked, was Buddy, Shooter's son. I liked him a lot. And I also liked Strap. I think that was his name, the guy who had to pray before every game. And yeah, I loved all three of those guys. I really liked how even though Jimmy was the star player on the team, he was not the typical stereotype of like the really arrogant, like I'm the best star player, like that's not likable and he's arrogant and he needs to be knocked down a peg. You know, he was not like that at all. He was very humble and like, He was a real leader. The other guys on the team obviously liked and respected him. They wanted him to take the last shot. Like he wasn't a ball hog. (laughs) He like had earned that respect and he was a good leader of the team. And yeah, I really liked him a lot. I liked how the coach didn't pressure him into being on the team. He let Jimmy make that decision for himself, uh, which ended up being a very good decision. And you know, with them winning a state championship and everything and Jimmy being the like star player, he totally could have won a like a basketball scholarship and went off to school. And that's what I like to imagine happened afterwards <laughs> whenever he graduated. But yeah, I really loved the subplot with Shooter. It didn't quite have the resolution that I was hoping for. It was a very realistic arc and that it wasn't all just fixed willy-nilly you know like he just miraculously recovers and never relapses which is possible that can happen but it was a very hard and realistic look at what can sometimes happen when like he came out of it for a while and was coaching and had such a big moment big victory you know coaching uh when Norman got thrown out that one time and we got to see him have that triumphant moment but then he plummets again uh, when all that pressure comes and it was really nice it was really nice getting to see him like listen to it on the radio and celebrating and all of that but I wish he could have been there I I really really wish he could have been there with his son when that happened but I loved seeing that resolution between him and his son with Buddy coming to visit him and saying like I love you dad and I'm here for you dad and we're gonna we're gonna be a family we're gonna live together like that was really really sweet seeing his son finally like come around and support and encourage him and seeing Norman inspire Shooter to really make a real effort to change and get out of that rut that he was in because I was I was kind of trying to figure it out at the beginning of the movie I was like who is this guy I didn't even know his son was on the team I was confused I was like who is this random town drunk who keeps like showing up in little scenes and then they cut away and I'm like what purpose is he gonna serve in the story but 
I loved them like showing how he was such a basketball fanatic. He was like always knowing everything about the other teams and he was the perfect assistant coach because he was always the one like going to scout everybody out. <laughs> I loved that. And it got me so emotional when Norman came and asked him to be his assistant coach because Norman knew like he knows what it's like to make a mistake, a really big mistake. And then everybody has an opinion about you. Everybody's judging you. They just kind of want to kick you to the curb after you mess up. And Norman got a second chance getting to coach at that school. And he then like returned the, the favor. He did the same thing, like giving giving Shooter a second chance. And I thought that was really sweet. And I, that subplot just added so much to the movie. It's such an emotional gut punch. And yeah, that was just a really fun movie. Who doesn't love an underdog story? You gotta love it. Especially in sports movies, it works so well with the format. And as always, I really enjoyed Gene Hackman and Barbara Hershey as well as Myra. I had to look at the credits to figure out what the character's name was. I don't know if I just missed it the whole time, but I felt like they didn't say her character's name very much, if at all, because I kept listening for it. And I was like, what is this character's name? Because I didn't know what to call her. <laughs> I was just calling her Barbara in my head the whole time, but her name was Myra. I did not see that romantic art coming, honestly. Like I sort of, it sort of crossed my mind. But I was also like, how much of an age gap is there here? Like, she seemed a lot younger than him. And I could be totally wrong. But she seemed a lot younger. So I was like wondering if he was going to be sort of like a more of a father figure for her because her father died. I, I didn't know where they were going with that. But yeah, they went there. They went with the romantic arc. So uh, good for them. And yeah, it was really great seeing her come around because she was like just hating on him from the beginning. And they kind of hinted at what could have caused that, like maybe her being jealous of her brother growing up, like with her parents being so into basketball and, you know, her brother's basketball seemed to be kind of the center of their world growing up and she didn't understand what was so important about it. Like, and then she went off and had these big, like dreams and goals and then she had to come back home when maybe she didn't want to. And I think she was just holding on to a lot of bitterness there. But yeah, seeing her come around and her and Norman get closer over the course of the movie, I really enjoyed those scenes. Really enjoyed the music. As I said, I love 80s synth music so much. It just creates such an, a nostalgic vibe. Like I didn't even grow up in the 80s, but you don't have to have grown up in the 80s for it to feel nostalgic. There's just something about it, something magical about 80s music, and it's just such a feel-good sound. And it makes you feel like you lived in a time that you weren't even born yet, you know? <laughs> like, I wasn't even born yet during the 80s, but I, like, I feel like I was there when I watched movies like this. And, yeah, this was a really fun story. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the gut punches, even. It had some really nice emotional arcs and emotional moments in this movie, and... Yeah, really good watch, guys. Really enjoyed it. So thank you so much to everybody who voted for it on the poll this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Be sure to check out the full-length reaction on Patreon. Link in the description below. Also, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't. And thanks again, guys, for watching. I will see you guys next week for another Film Friday.